This is the Clockwork Pie Pico Calc. It's a DIY kit that creates a gorgeous retro inspired handheld that runs a ton of languages and celebrates minimalist computing. But it's Raspberry Pi Pico brain while charming is like a lawnmower engine in a sports car. So I wondered what happens if we give it a real engine? What if it could do this? Yes, it's a full-fledged Linux operating system running on this tiny device, giving it access to Pico 8. I'm Jay Blanks, and today I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving straight into a major upgrade for the Pico Calc. I've ripped out the original Pico and dropped in a quad-core Raspberry Pi 02W. The goal? to transform this from a cool calculator into the ultimate pocket size Pico 8 machine. This mod gives it the power to run thousands of community made games through the incredible Splore browser. So first I'll give you a taste of the incredible performance this upgrade unlocks, then we'll deep dive into the technical process step by step so you can follow along. All right, let's get right into the gaming. The upgrade is immediately noticeable. The first game I fired up was an adventure game called Terra. In my opinion, the game runs flawlessly with fluid movement and instant response from the controls. Now, I have no idea what to do in this game, um, but it's still pretty cool to play. Then I jumped into a fast paced racer called Pico World Race. It's actually really cool how smooth it plays on this tiny screen. You hold Z to move and the D-pad to move left and right. Drifting around the corners and weaving through opponents feels tight and responsive. So this isn't a gimmick. The Zero 2W has more than enough power to handle anything the Pico 8 community can throw at it. Let's see if I can get on top of these guys. Come on, come on. Oh man, I should have went around him. So how is this possible? Well, it's all thanks to a project called Pico Calc Trixie, which is maintained by Michael Mayer and the community. It all starts with a hardware brain transplant. The first step is to carefully open the Pico Calc's case and remove the original Raspberry Pi Pico. And with the old brain out, you can add the new one, the Raspberry Pi 02W. Now you have two main ways to do this. The first option requires no soldering at all. You can just use 11 jumper wires to connect the Pi Zero directly to the correct pins where the Pico used to sit. This method connects everything needed, the power, the spy data lines for the display, the I squared C connection for the keyboard, and the PWM audio output. Here's the best diagram I found so you can see exactly which pin goes where. Your second option is to use a custom board built by Michael Mayer. This provides a cleaner, more permanent installation, but it does require some soldering. You need to solder male and female headers to the board to connect the Pi Zero to the Pico Calc. Whichever path you choose, once it's done, the new, more powerful computer has complete control over the entire handheld. Lastly, you could create your own custom PCB to connect everything all together, but it would definitely take a bit of time to get everything aligned perfectly. And with the hardware in place, it's time for the software. Now, this is a multi-step process that has instructions on GitHub, but I'll break it down today. First, we need to prepare the operating system. 
you need to download a free program called Raspberry Pi Imager. Then we need to click Choose Device and select Raspberry Pi 02W. And then click on Choose OS. Now I initially used a lightweight 32-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS called Trixie onto a micro USD card. But then I later upgraded to the 64-bit version for a potential performance boost, which uses an identical process. Now, using a light version is key as it doesn't have a desktop environment which saves resources. From there, you choose your SD card and then inside the Imager's advanced settings, you pre-configure your Wi-Fi credentials and most importantly, enable SSH inside of the services tab. SSH allows us to remotely access the Pi from another computer, which is essential for the next steps. Second, with the micro SD card in the Pi Zero and the device powered on, I logged in remotely using SSH. Now this gives you a command line interface to the new brain before its own screen and keyboard are working. Third, we need to get the essential drivers. You just run two commands to update the system and install the necessary software with sudo apt update and sudo apt install git. Then you clone the repository. You can just copy and paste this command line in the terminal just as we did the sudo apt update. This repository contains all the custom scripts and configuration files needed to make Linux work with the PicoCalc specific hardware. Fourth, we have to get the screen working. So you navigate into the PicoCalc Trixie folder and then we copy the display driver to the correct directory. After that, you use sudo nano to update two critical boot files. These tell the Pi how to initialize the spy display on startup. And then after that, whenever you reboot using sudo reboot, then once it's finished rebooting, the Linux command line will come to life right on the PicoCalc screen. And finally, the last two steps is to enable the keyboard, which you just copy and paste this which maps the physical buttons on the device to standard keyboard inputs that Linux can understand. And the last step is to get the audio working, which you add one line to the config file. And this tells the Pi to reroute the audio output to the pins connected to the PicoCalc speaker. And with that, you're good to go. With a fully functional Linux system, it was time for the final step. Copy over your legally purchased copy of Pico 8 for the Raspberry Pi. Then you make the file executable and launch it with dot slash Pico 8 underscore 64. But if you went with the 32-bit OS, you would just use dot slash Pico 8 instead. Give it a second and it'll load up Pico 8. The real magic happens when you type in splore or e and click enter. That command launches Pico 8's built-in game browser and suddenly the entire Pico 8 universe is at your fingertips. The D-pad and buttons feel perfect and they're mapped just as you'd expect. You use the D-pad to move, the Z key acts as the A button, and the X key is pretty much the B button. Holding enter opens the menu. And if you hit control Q, you can exit Pico 8. They even have a Sonic game on here, which is a demake of the original. But on a device this small, it's just incredible. Now there's a complex survival game called P-Craft, which also plays perfectly, but I'm not exactly sure how to play, but maybe that's something we'll explore later on in this channel. 
but this truly has become the ultimate pocket size fantasy console. If this is the kind of project that gets you excited, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. I have a lot more projects like this in the works. So let me know in the comments, what other projects would you like to see me review? So there you have it. We took the PicoCalc, a device built around the limits of a microcontroller and completely unlocked its potential. By swapping the Pi Pico for a Pi Zero 2W, we turned it from a simple retro gadget into a full on pocket size Linux gaming machine. It's no longer just a calculator, it's a portable window into the entire wonderful world of Pico 8 with thousands of games just a button press away. I'm Jay Blinked, thanks for watching, peace.